So the DJI Pocket 3 has got to be the most overhyped camera of 2024. Is it worth it? Maybe, but I'm still super skeptical. So all over YouTube, you'll find every single camera creator saying how this thing is amazing. It's the best camera ever, truly a game changer. It's um, just nothing but overhyped, oversaturated. Everyone says that this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 is the best camera that you can buy. Now, I don't know about all of you, but when a large group of people start saying how something is amazing and it's flawless and it's the best thing since sliced bread, I start to think there's no way. This is overhyped. This is a paid sponsorship. This is just brilliant marketing. There is no way that this camera can be that good. Now, I will say that after doing a ton of research, just like you probably did a ton of research, there are a bunch of flaws in this camera, just like any camera. No camera is perfect. But as I started to think about it, I said, you know, this camera, the DJI Pocket 3, this might actually be a really good value if your use case matches what it is actually designed for. This thing took like a month to get here, by the way. But why did I get this thing? Well, I currently have three main cameras that I use. I have this camera that you're looking at right now. This is the Sony ZV-E1. It's a full frame camera. It's a very small full frame camera, but it's still very heavy, especially if you're picking it up, trying to vlog with it, which I've actually done. It's very awesome to vlog with an amazing setup like this. But even if you do go to the gym and you've got some muscles in your shoulders and your arms, it's still tiring to it still takes a toll on your shoulder, not to mention it is pretty heavy. You do feel it in your backpack versus if you don't take it. So while this setup is amazing, this is also a very heavy setup. And this is also a very expensive setup as well. 2200 for the body, 900 for the lens, and 350 for the microphone. We're over $3,000 right now. And if you actually want to take your camera out in a crowded place like New York City, which I typically do, that might be a little bit too heavy and a little bit too expensive for you, if especially if you're going out in, you know, mostly daylight, mostly a nice day, which most of us, when we're going out filming videos, vlogging, that's what we do. At the time this camera came out, the only other vlog style camera was this, the Sony ZV-1, first generation. Great little camera, little pocket size camera. Very flawed though, because the audio is not the greatest, although it does come with this cool wind muffler. And that stabilization is, it's only a 24 millimeter lens, meaning you gotta hold it pretty far out, but either you're dealing with shaky video or you have to enable that active stabilization, which crops in like 30% on this one. Whereas let me show you the active stabilization on this camera. We'll put it in active, standard, active, standard, right? So this one was always flawed for a pocketable camera because you got to put a long selfie stick on it and it just, I never took this one out of the house. I always used my phone. Now I do have the iPhone 15 Pro. This is a great little pocket camera. This thing is absolutely great. It, it's always in your pocket. If you throw a case on it like this, it's robust, it's waterproof. It does everything you need it to do as long as you're not getting the 128 gigabyte model. You know, you gotta make sure you don't run out of storage. This thing is great. Where this thing is not so great is when, I don't know where it is. Let me, let me go find it. Where this thing is not so great is in a loud environment or if it's super windy, which my solution for that is either use the DJI wireless microphone or just use a cheap little microphone like this. You clip it onto your shirt here. It plugs directly into the bottom right there and boom, there you go. You got a super simple audio setup although not as convenient as just pulling something out of your pocket and starting to film with. Now, the third option that I have is actually the DJI Osmo Action 4. This has proven to be a very good camera, and before I was using this, I was using the GoPro Hero 9, right? So the GoPro Hero 9, great for when I'm riding the bike, not so great for indoor videos or actually getting a good image. This better image than the GoPro Hero 9, but still a tad too wide and especially in a studio environment, I don't think, dog outside hears me, I don't think that you would be able to really get a good image out of this. So, three main cameras. Big full frame camera, expensive but great. 
small little action camera, 300 bucks. Does great when you're outside vlogging, but that's pretty much it. And the phone in your pocket, which does great, but this has limitations. Now I found with these two lightweight cameras, the iPhone and the Action 4, it was great because these things are super lightweight. They're super robust. You could just throw them in your pocket, especially this one. I've just thrown this one in my pocket and then just put the long selfie stick in my pocket as well. But I found when I took these small cameras, I was always sacrificing image quality and it still felt like I was not getting a real professional looking image. Now, taking this out, the ZV-1, this I did start to feel like I was getting more of a professional image with that bokeh, with that blurry background, but I had to work around that shaky stabilization or I had to work around that insane stabilization crop and basically you're filming with a 28 or a 30 millimeter lens, which for me is just, it's too tiring to hold it all the way out there. I'd rather just use the ultra wide on this. Now, with the Osmo Action, not the Osmo, what the Osmo Pocket 3 does is it pretty much would take this, or what I'm hoping to do, it's going to take this and fix all the flaws that the ZV-1 has with adding just better stabilization and just an overall better image. So that's the reason why I bought it. Now, at the end of the day, is this the best thing since sliced bread? No, I don't think so. It's a camera that costs under $600. It has a one inch sensor. It has a gimbal built into it so that you can have really good mechanical stabilization. You can, if you're walking and talking and you're doing videos, this thing, absolutely great. And that's pretty much it. Now, the negatives of this is it is not rugged and it is not waterproof at all, not even a little bit. It does have an open SD slot right there. So even in the light rain, I would not wanna use this. But I do have my phone to fall back on. But that's pretty much the reason why I decided to try this out. I wanted something that would bridge that gap between either filming with my iPhone or filming with my action camera, but not having to take my big, expensive, heavy, full-frame setup with a big microphone on top and a giant lens, but still get a really good image and not have that ultra-wide look and also not have that digital, I don't mind the look of the iPhone, honestly. But a note on the look of the iPhone, it sometimes can be a bit tough to just use your phone for every single thing. I write a lot of notes in my phone, especially notes for these videos. I'm using my phone so much to use it for a camera all the time. I wouldn't wanna do that. It's nice to have a separate focused product, especially one that you can change the change the SD card. You have um, removable storage. You don't have to, you're not like stuck at 256 and you gotta start deleting files. So first impressions, just taking this out of the box, playing with it, just, you know, um, opening it up, seeing how the gimbal does. It actually is pretty decent. One thing I found is you can configure it to actually, you know, if you film it like that, you can actually configure it to still stay in the, I don't know what, landscape orientation. You're not, you don't have to just go to vertical video. And for me, filming it like this actually is probably going to be a little bit easier, a little bit less intrusive. And I wouldn't want to drop it with the screen like that because I've heard that the screen, when the screen flips back and forth, if you drop it with the screen open like that, it's you can potentially damage it. Now there are two things that I really am interested in testing this camera and seeing how it does. Number one is the onboard audio, not the audio connecting a DJI wireless mic. I have a DJI wireless mic. I could probably also use this Sennheiser USB-C lavalier mic and just plug it into the USB-C port in the back like so. That's great, but if I'm always doing that, we get back to just filming with my iPhone all the time. So is there going to be a much of a difference? Or is there gonna be a huge difference between just filming with my phone and filming this? It might start to be a bit pointless to actually carry this when I'm gonna to have to carry extra accessories that could be used with my phone anyway. So that's number one. I really wanna see how the onboard audio does in a windy environment and in a loud environment and looks like the microphone is right there pointed forward. So we'll have to see. I always like it when you can just pull out a camera, hit record, and the microphone is either connected on it like I have right now, or the onboard audio of the microphone or the onboard audio of the camera rather is actually decent enough that you can use it and you don't have to worry about connecting an extra microphone and stuff like that. The ZV-E1, the onboard microphone is just okay. I don't really use it, but it's nice to just fall back on. And they also send you the windscreen that goes on top like this. It pretty much just looks just, it looks just like this, which 
it's usable. Not my first choice, but it's usable. Now with the Action 4, I did go ahead and glue on the windscreens to the microphones. The audio coming out of this thing, for as small as it is, this I'm really impressed with it. Even in loud situations, I can edit audio and remove some of the background noise, and it still makes my voice and the sounds of the video actually sound pretty good. So really convenient when you have a camera that can capture onboard audio and it's actually usable. So that's number one. Now number two is going to be, how does the camera do when you're pointing it away from you, walking, filming outside of where you are, not just holding the camera like this and pointing it at your face, talking to the lens. How does it do when you start to take the camera and point it away and film either walking shots, B-roll shots, establishing shots, things like that. It seems like this is very well engineered for pointing it at your face, talking to it, and walking vlog style. I want to know how it does when you spin that gimbal around and you actually start to film outside. Now, one thing about this that I really like is it is a 20 millimeter equivalent lens. I find 20 millimeters is that perfect focal length where you can actually vlog, but it also looks, makes things look nice when you turn it around and you film outside. Whereas if you were stuck at a 16 like this one, the 16 millimeter, 16 is just a tad too wide for filming away from you, in front of you. It just doesn't look as good. Now a 24 millimeter focal range is actually great for getting those wide establishing shots, but it's not that ultra wide things start to look small and really distorted. 24, like I was saying with the standard ZV-1, you could do it, but you do have to stick your arm all the way out there. So you do have to make compromises. That's why 20, 24 millimeters, I think is a great all around focal range for what I'm doing, whereas 16 is just really good for filming yourself. I'm glad they actually put a 20 millimeter lens on there and they didn't opt for anything wider or narrower. So I'm interested to see how it actually looks when you film it outside. But I can already tell you that taking the Sony ZV-E1 with the 20 millimeter Sony lens and actually filming outside and seeing how it looks, I pretty much know what I'm getting into. And 20 millimeters is that perfect Goldilocks all around focal range just for what I'm doing. If I could be stuck with one focal range or one focal length for the rest of my life, it would probably be a 20 millimeter, maybe even an 18 millimeter, but 20 millimeters seems to work really well. Now, when compared to these cameras, one area where this camera I'm almost positive is going to pull away from is going to be an indoor setup like this. Now, currently I don't have any lights on. I've got a window right Got a window right over there, right behind us. And uh, you can see I just got some windows right here. This one's open, this one's closed, just so that the shot looks a bit better. This is how I like filming indoors at my desk. So let's see how this thing looks and sounds in an indoor studio setup. DJI Pocket 3 right here, Sony ZV-E1. Let's go ahead and try to make the apertures the same. F6.3, Sony ZV-E1. DJI Pocket 3. Full frame, ZV-E1, one inch sensor, Pocket 3. ZV-E1, Pocket 3. This is the audio coming out of the Pocket 3. This is the audio coming out of the ZV-E1 with the big fluffy microphone on top. Now remove the ecm one m microphone from the ZV-E1. This is now the onboard audio, just raw coming out of the ZV-E1. This is the onboard audio raw coming out of the DJI Pocket 3. And they are about, the Pocket 3 was a bit closer, but now they're about pretty good. Again, onboard standard raw audio ZV-E1, onboard standard raw audio Pocket 3. Now what we're gonna do is right now, throw on an equalizer for the ZV-E1. So I'm going to doctor up the audio, push and pull some of the frequencies, or maybe just throw the loudness filter on. I'll put in the edit somewhere on the screen to let you know what I did to get it to sound any better. ZV-E1 with the equalizer added, audio edited. DJI Pocket 3 with the audio edited. Let's see how it sounds. Now, one thing that I think that the DJI Pocket 3 can do, it does have that product showcase type. So it looks like, yeah, you can actually get some pretty decent background blur, especially if you get nice and close to it. You probably can't get much of a background blur on the inside if you've got, you know, only something five, uh, five feet, I'm sitting about five or six feet from the wall behind me. For that, you would really need a full frame and a lens that can go all the way down to 1.8. Look at that blur right there. That blur is crazy, whereas 
even if you're at f4, still get a decent amount of blur with a full frame camera. But yeah, that's the Pocket 3 indoor scenario. Just looking at the screen, I think it looks pretty decent. This is the ZV-E1 onboard audio. How's it look? All right, one final test. I actually did take my DJI wireless mic 2 and I did pair it to this one. So I want to see how quickly I, I can pair Bluetooth wise to this if I just turn it on. I don't, let me stop talking and just turn it on. Let's see. Turn it on. Wow. Turned on pretty fast. So all basically right now is what you're, you're hearing the DJI mic 2 just connected straight to the pocket 3 and i gotta say as soon as i turned it on it was boom and while recording so that's pretty cool so now let's do an audio test with actually external sounds so this is the dji pocket 3 with the dji mic 2 and this is the sony zv e1 with the ecmb 1m the 350 dollars sony microphone that's an amazing microphone but only works with sony's great microphone DJI wireless mic 2 with the Pocket 3 paired Bluetooth wise. Sony ZV-E1 ECM B1M shotgun microphone attached to the top. The first impressions with this one, pretty good, pretty good. Now I should have said at the beginning of this video, I bought this with my own money. I had to wait a month to get it, but I'm actually pretty excited to get out there and vlog with it and see, I'm sure it's going to be a different, nicer experience than just pulling out my phone or pulling out an action camera, but we will have to see if it is worth keeping Although when compared to something like the ZV-1 Mark I, or especially the ZV-1 Mark II at $900, I would say this thing is going to be a much better option if you're doing walk-in and talking style outdoor videos like I am. So I got some tests to do. I want to wait to see after the honeymoon phase, after I've had this thing for a week or two, how I really feel about it. And I will report back to let you know if I think it is worth it. With that being said, thanks for watching.